Hi, this is a Conversations with Creatives extended podcast for Opus. We're revisiting the last two episodes about exploring the outdoors to hear more from our four plein air artists as they delve deeper into their work, experiences and techniques. If you've tuned in before, some of this content might sound familiar, but hopefully hearing it again in a broader context will shed some new light. For those of you joining us for the first time, a warm welcome. I hope you all enjoy this longer, audio-only format. To begin, Jose de Juan will guide us back to the urban environment. Jose graduated from the Madrid Art Academy in his native Spain and moved to the USA in 1994, where he began working as a computer artist in the film industry. Despite rigorous career demands, his passion for painting has held strong. Jose is a devoted plein air artist who finds constant inspiration in the city and its surroundings. Fascinated by light and weather, he employs a representational approach, striving to show respect for materials and an honesty of rendition. My name is Jose de Juan, and I usually do plein air uh, work, and um, I do a lot of sketching also, uh, watercolor, uh, and, and do a little bit of studio uh, work when I manage to get a studio. <laughs> it's not my uh, pay job, but it's what I do for my passion and to keep me alive and happy. When I go outside and I paint, I'm not uh, usually looking for something. It's that moment where you stop and you don't sometimes know exactly why. And that happens a lot when, when you're outside in any setting. It could be urban or it could be nature. I, I find myself that painting outdoors inspires me in the sense that I don't look for what's pretty or it's usually the thing that strikes you. It could be a color, it could be the way the shadow is creating an interesting composition. Uh, it's not the thing that you know, it's what you see. There, there's a painting almost everywhere. Um, and it just depends on that, on the, the, the outdoors is just always changing, uh, evolving. Even in, during the course of a painting, the day is moving. So there's going to be interesting things happening. Um, uh, I, like I would say, there's 30 paintings in every corner. So, so that's the outdoors for me. Um, and it's a little bit of a guerrilla type painting where you have to um, be open to it more than go searching for it. And that's what I like about it that. I used to set up with an idea, I want to paint this, and now I don't. Now I go out and I don't even know which bus direction I'm going to, I don't have a car. <laughs> so that's why I do a lot of urban, uh, but uh, I, don't, I don't pick anything in particular. Sometimes there's an idea, oh, you know, I saw some construction crew the other day and they had this beautiful uh, bulldozers or, uh, but halfway there, there might be something that, that, um, or, or, or something in this spot. I might change my mind just because there's some blooming tree over there or, 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 or an interesting, uh, rusty sign or a, a group of buildings. That's what I like about it. It's always a surprise. And I think the point of plein air is not to try to copy what it's, you, you, like I said, you express what you see. You can put, if you can put it in words, okay, what I like about this is the color scheme or, and then that's what the goal of the painting becomes. It's not trying to copy nature or trying to take a photograph because nature is always, always gonna win. And it's infinitely detailed. So what, in the painting, what I try to do is say, well, this is the idea. This is what stopped me on my tracks and try to tell the viewer to achieve that same moment, to say, you know, just stop and notice this. This is transient, but we captured this moment where the light was hitting just right, or or this was made beautiful by the weather, or uh, that's to me what's um, beautiful about painting outdoors and being open to seeing the beauty really around. Painting out outdoors, I. I think you have to abandon all hope of getting a finished piece. You, that I think that's a mistake. You have to go out with the sense that you're gonna kind of like take notes 
on what could become a finished piece in the studio because when you're outdoors um, many people say it's fresh uh, or they're, they're experimenting I think it can be sloppy and I think it's good that that happens uh, some some people manage to paint very finished pieces but I think what you're doing is really sketching um, and trying to come and if there's a very successful sketch then you can just turn it into a larger painting or or elaborate more on this but this is what you are going for is to take notes from from what happened there's an urgency um, there's gonna be your physical comfort there's gonna be people around sometimes it doesn't bother me but some people get bothered by that there's gonna be weather and but mainly it's that urgency is try to get it quickly try to get it uh, the main ideas down try to synthesize and that's what I was saying you don't if you go out to copy you're you're setting yourself a little bit for failure what you need to do is get the idea down quickly and that's going to inform everything uh, from your equipment to to the result and sometimes you have to walk away once you get your idea on canvas you know you let it be <laughs> when you're outside it's you're more surprised so it's what you can you discover or what surprises you and that's that's to me the beauty of it um so yes it's a different kind of creativity it's more accepting of what happens i've painted in in snow in rain the only thing i cannot handle is wind when there's wind it's better to give up but you know warm clothes <laughs> and uh i mean i'm a big guy i can endure a little bit of weather you don't want to be carrying a lot uh, because you're it's you're gonna have to move and that helps a lot also with the with the, dealing with the environment and your physical and your safety especially you know if you're uh, a woman uh, painting outside sometimes can be you know because there's all kinds of people especially in an urban setting <laughs> it's about conveying an idea so it, it's trying to reduce your materials to some people are very strict about the palette they use I think it also depends on the environment. For example, when I was painting in London, I used a lot of black because there's a lot of black gates. And it turns out that that pops beautifully against the red of the buses and that becomes London. And the Pacific Northwest, I prime my canvases always with a warm color because there's so much green. So that makes them nice. So you have to be adapting to where you're painting, but, uh, but the main thing is to convey the message. So a very reduced palette of warms and cools. I also I use some transparent colors like Indian yellow or oxide or, or ultramarine blue for the back, uh, for the shadows. And um, and then I use also, not, not don't carry many brushes. You know, flats are great. They create nice edges. You want a variety of edges and the flats are perfect to create edges and they're more ambiguous. So a, a pared down equipment it's good to deal with sketching outdoors and a friendly attitude because <laughs> people are going to talk to you uh, that's if you're especially in a city i always keep the warm cool warm red cool red uh, you know uh, limited uh, palette but it's true that if you like in california i'm going to use all ochres and browns and siennas and, and and so you add those to the mix and and also I use the lazy colors if, I, if you're gonna paint the poppy feel um, then just use the orange instead of trying to mix it you know you get a color that's already mixed and it's already so uh, but you know I, I don't put that much thought into it uh, maybe if I do several then I get um, uh, some like, like uh, um, some extra colors the lazy mixed ones, you know, the ones that you don't have to mix every time. Spring, it's spring, so let's get some light green. <laughs> you don't have to do it every time. And it's also good for experimenting. If you forget a color, try with the other ones that you have, you know. it's That's the thing about plein air. I think it's experimenting and, and being open to, to, to what happens. I'm not a morning person. Many people like to paint in the morning, but sometimes after lunch, oh, well, okay, let's go. And the bus is just, um, it, it's the one that the first one that arrives. And sometimes it goes downtown and I paint downtown or sometimes I just let it run until the end of the line and see what happens. 
uh, you know, I've gotten to some very unpainterly places, but you try to make it work. Um, I got to a milk, the milk uh, dairy farm thing here. It was not really that pretty, but I painted there. <laughs> Hopefully what you convey is that, the, the, that there's something beautiful everywhere. You don't have to travel to Tuscany every year. You don't have to, <laughs> you don't have to live in a beautiful, uh, you know, historical town. There's going to be beautiful things, even in modern settings, which is something that I find a lot of people, oh, I don't like to paint cars or, or modern buildings. And there's painters that do wonderful stuff with modern. There's beauty everywhere. You just have to look or be open. That's why it's not, not look for it. That's what the thing, it's always a surprise. It's always when you stop and oh, what did stop me here? It's not, it's, uh, you know, it, moving from that, moving from looking for the things and let them inspire you. What I do a lot is squint. Because if you squint, you stop seeing the details of things. You stop seeing cars and buildings and you start looking at shapes and light. And so my state of mind is very, it's almost like, it's almost like a scavenger. I'm looking like this all around because there's going to be something that's going to just snap. And it's, and sometimes I have to look back and see, okay, what was that? That, um, uh, and sometimes it's just the way the light is falling. I'm making an interest L or the contrast between two buildings, or maybe the haze or a depth or a, a, a color scheme that I find interesting. Maybe there's something very vibrant against something very bleak. Or, or, or dull, um, it could be the shadow raking against the wall. And that's that's my state of mind. It's very, let's just soak it in, soak it in. <laughs> and sometimes it's difficult, you have to make choices. Sometimes there's one great painting here, another one there. If you're really into the spirit, you might do several sketches and not be stuck and try to finish them all. When I get a studio, I will do that more often. <laughs> going outside gets me out of me actually i'm exploring my inside by trying to be outside <laughs> and be open to what's out not just always in my head because i tend to be a lot in my head I, i've met all kinds of personalities that do plein air and it seems to be a little bit of an addiction and a passion to me is that is that finding the the beauty every day and it, it, there's not enough in normal life and and to try to convey that and that's the biggest joy is when someone really gets it in a painting and that's why I think as a painter when I look at a painting several days afterwards I can tell oh I got it or not I didn't I know it's a little cheesy but that's it it's the the finding the the moment every day that you know at least it was worth living for this <laughs> I know there's a lot of art speak about um, experimenting and how plein air is very fresh and how we all, all go in a journey, but I think the main thing is just to try to not be stuck on on doing the perfection and not getting the most expensive materials, not getting the most, it's just actually being outside what's the reward in itself. An artist for nearly four decades and a passionate landscape painter well, next year for Maria Josenhans, whose singular work plays back and forth between representational and abstract as she allows each painting to find its own path. Her career has been shaped by long periods of training, teaching, working as an illustrator, immersion in large format photography, competing in and adjudicating Highland dance and traveling the world by bicycle. She holds a BFA with honors from the University of the Arts, Philadelphia, and has been the recipient of numerous awards and grants. My name is Maria Josenhans, and um, I paint both plein air, so that is outdoors on location, and I also paint in my studio uh, here in North Vancouver, British Columbia. Nothing beats direct observation. And for me, that's the cornerstone of all my painting, being outdoors, actually seeing what's going on, being a part of the environment. It's just super important so that when I come back to my studio, all of that is still with me. So that I use my plein air paintings to um, maybe not make direct um, 
direct studio paintings from them, but I will use them with the color and all the information that they have in them. They, they basically inform my larger studio paintings. I worked outdoors quite a bit um, all my life. I did a lot of photography as well. And even when I was photographing, it's I, you sort of just let the landscape bring you in and you just let yourself be engaged with whatever it is that excites you that's in front of you and you don't have to name it you don't have to you don't have to analyze it or anything like that but so i i choose what i'm painting just by um letting myself be a part of where i am and being immersed in that situation it's always changing so trying to keep up with that is something that you sort of learn to let go of you know it's happening and you know it's going to change, and that's all fine. You just have to be fine with it because that's what it's going to do. And and that's actually a part of the excitement. And, and so I, I tend to work really quickly when I'm outdoors, or I, I sort of try to. So there's a very there's a very strong intention when you're outdoors to really absorb what's happening at that moment, and then um, and then that can be a big part of the painting. So uh, a lot of times I just I'll finish the painting in about. Um, uh, well, sometimes an hour and a half or so, because you know if you keep going on it, well, everything around me has changed. When I'm out in the field, um, I, I do do sketching um, quite a bit. Uh, and when I say quite a bit, it doesn't mean it's necessarily a detailed sketch that um, when someone else looks at it, they might know what's happening. But it's my little roadmap that I make for myself that tells me what it is that inspired me to begin with to paint that scene. And then when I feel like I might be going a little off the rails when I'm outdoors and I'm painting my, I'm, I'm working on my painting and I'm thinking, hmm, right, where, where was I going with this? Then I have that reference to go back to. And then when I'm in the studio, I will use those same sketches and uh, plein air paintings to help build a studio painting. So it may, I may not choose to do the exact same uh, scene, but as long as it's the same day, the same feel, around the same time of day, geographical area, everything that was happening, all the atmosphere that was happening in that plein air work is a big part of um, what needs to come into that studio painting to make it live and breathe for both myself and hopefully the person that looks at it. I would say the essence of not just place, but that feeling of being outdoors. That is the one that I want to evoke when I'm doing my painting. So be it bright sunlight on the river or that feeling of warm summer days, whatever it is, or the cool winters, that's where I'm going with it. I'm going for that feeling, not a replication of place. Creativity for me happens when I can sort of bring myself to a slightly calmer place. So I think that's a big reason that I gravitate towards being in nature and going to a backcountry kind of place where there are no people. Because you can really let yourself just relax into nature, in, into your surroundings. Sometimes that can happen too in the city. It doesn't, it doesn't mean that uh, you have to lose yourself in the backcountry, but it is important to, to make sure that like how you're situated when you're painting meaning like are you surrounded by a busy street and and all of that is like getting into you and maybe that's actually something you want to bring into your painting right or is it basically the sound in the trees so i'd say that's the biggest part of being outdoors it's like an uncensored environment whereas in our studio we can we can make it what we want. We can put on whatever music we want. We can induce a mood. But when you're outdoors, be it urban or out in the country, it's just whatever it's going to be, and you get to be a part of that. I might get used to painting um, here in British Columbia where we have a certain kind of light, but, but then if you go traveling, if I go to Mexico or something like that or Europe, the light's going to be really different. So um, I always pack different different colors depending on where I'm going, because I'll know that the light's going to offer me something a little bit different in the sky. I try and travel really light when I'm going outdoors, right? So the main thing is I will always have, like I said, a primaries with me. 
if I were, you know, stuck to just three colors in white, it would probably be cad yellow light, alizarin permanent, and ultramarine blue. And I paint in oil, so I'm, I usually use, like, the gambling kind of colors and that sort of thing, but um, because they really vary from company to company. But, um, but those are, like, my three set that will get me just about anything I need in almost any situation. Like a really great standard palette would be starting with a warm and cool of each primary. So for yellow, for example, it would be cad yellow light and yellow ochre. So that's a cool and warm. And then for red, it'd be cad red light and alizarin permanent. And then for blue, it'd be ultramarine blue and cobalt blue. And I particularly love viridian green, so um, genuine. So I, I generally throw that on there too, and white, of course. I tend to stay away from uh, uh, a, a whole load of, you know, burnt sienna and all that kind of thing. And I, I do like starting from um, just a white panel because like I've said, you never know where you're gonna be. You never know what to expect. And if I tone my panel, I've already set a stage that may not be appropriate for the scene that I'm going to choose. I love painting six by eight. It's not a like major commitment. You're gonna get some really good information, some great color notes, um, so that when I come back to the studio, I can refer to those. It's really good to be, um, when you start a painting, to be clear about your intention, because it really helps you. Lots of times I just choose to make, um, to make oil sketches that will give me tons of information later. And if I get a good painting out of it, that's awesome. But if I don't, then I'm not really too much about it. Test out all your gear before you go out. <laughs> because the last thing you want to do is be up in the field and everything's just everywhere. And see how your setup's going to work and see if you're always going to need really even ground or if you can go out and you can be sort of like standing on rocks. Nature can be far more original than me. So if I just go out there and, and look and be open, like I said, to what's in front of me. I'm going to discover far more than I ever could in my own imagination. The world is just a treasure trove if you're if you're open to it. I think that's a big part of plein air painting. Is it, it's different than going for a walk because you stop and you are standing in one place. And if you think that there is nothing to paint where you are, the best thing to do is to stand still. It is there. There will be something there. And uh, the other day I was out painting and um, I got a really late start and I did one, I did one little painting and then um, I waited till there weren't as many people and I went over to this other area where I could like get myself in and not be in the way. And I, I went there to paint one painting and I ended up painting three, you know, just small sketches. I basically did a 180. I didn't even move my tripod that my box was on. Sometimes I think people feel like, well, what do I paint here? I don't know what to paint. And, and I would say, just stand still, get out your sketchbook and just sketch what is right in front of you. And nine times out of 10, you're gonna find something. Next, we'll hear from Zandra Tumariwan, who describes himself as an architect, interior designer, urban designer, artist, and tone deaf musician. His vibrant structural urban sketches capture both the energy and detail of the city with three-dimensional precision and flair. My name is Zandro and my family name is Tumaliwan, usually pronounced as Tumaliwan or I just tell them the easier way to remember it is remember two million. My background is in architecture so that's probably why you see me as sketching those buildings a lot and for the last 20 years and I've been working um, as interior designer. I did my architecture in the Philippines and even when we were students, we, we were asked to go out and sketch like some sections of our buildings. We, we didn't have a lot of sort of historical buildings out there in the Philippines except when you go around uh, Manila or somewhere where uh, the, the Spaniards actually um, stayed. Whatever you, we learn from school, we learn from history of architecture. I do the sketching a lot when I'm traveling, especially with my family, and it gives me a chance for them to sort of um, inspire them and share some of my 
what I've learned when I was a student and some of the history of the buildings, for example. So we'll be walking for an hour, let's say in New York or in London, and then we find a nice place, we look for a nice place to sit down and I start sketching while they rest. And at the same time, explain to them like, this building used to be that building or, you know, it's got that history of that building and then I explain to them some of the details. So, you know, at, at the same time, I just kind of, some, some you know, a way for me to connect um, to them what I'm doing and, and what I like, what I'm passionate about. It's also to give me a, a chance to actually go out and, and explore. It kind of felt different when the, the pandemic started. Before, I would uh, spend some time in downtown and look for a place to uh, sit down and, you know, sketch. Uh, and I like it when I'm actually sitting in front of the building or stand, standing in front of the building because I I can feel the whole scale. I, I can feel the whole thing and the, the whole vibe of the building and around that building, especially when, when you're standing in, in a street or where everybody's just passing by you. And you can feel it. And that's the difference, like, when I try to sketch from the photos that I took, it's, I guess it becomes very technical. Instead of just a loosey-goosey sketch with what you're capturing is actually the vibe. What I like about sketching outside, I don't feel the urge to kind of sketch the building uh, perfectly. I just kind of have to feel the building and, and sketch it. I don't have to count how many windows, how many floors. <laughs> I guess it's there's a difference when I sketch sketching uh, buildings uh, as compared to let's say natural elements, right? When I try to sketch, like I go to a creek or I sketch trees or in a park, I'll go to a quiet place. I I, I find I, I'll find my zen there. Whereas when I sketch a building. I'm looking for a happy place. I'm, I'm, I'm sitting in that corner. I feel that's my happy place. The mood around me affects how I, uh, how I sketch. And as I said, you know, when there's a lot of people, there's a very active, vibrant uh, mood around me. Uh, it reflects on, on my sketch. With, with, the, with the nature, uh, I, I try to capture the, the softness of the whole environment, whereas when I sketch buildings, I have to, I try to capture the, the, the hardness or the stability of that building. So I tend to use um, ink a lot and then do watercolor. Whereas in, when I go in park or I sketch part of the uh, part of the river or creek, I just use watercolor and a pencil. This is the month that where, you know, the weather started uh, getting better here in Vancouver, where it's more conducive to go outside and sketch. I, I like it better when it's not planned because that's where the challenge is. Like you, you go to a neighborhood and say, what's nice about the neighborhood? So I've got a bunch of sketches where I just, when I, I'm waiting for my child and I just sit in the parking lot and I just go walk around and start um, sketching some of the houses. So if I tap my architect side, um, I go for the details. Um, and I really enjoyed um, when we went to London, Bath, uh, we went to Paris and all, all, the, all the way to Lourdes. And even my children started uh, liking the whole experience and understood why I like architecture. And they said in comparison to what they see here in North America, they don't see the whole history of the architecture or the whole culture is different. I do like the details. Um, again, it goes back to what I've studied in school. Seeing it in scale, it's for, for example, the columns with all the Doric or Ionic or the Corinthian um, capital. You just, I just used to see them in sketches or pictures, but I never get to feel how big those columns are and how do they relate to the whole interior of the building or the facade. Um, and again, it's it's just the, the history of the building resonates with me. It's I, I kind of feel the whole thing when I'm there actually sketching it. 
my, my sketches became more detailed when I did the buildings in Europe. When I uh, sketched buildings in North America, uh, most of them are very contemporary, unless I go to, uh, I look at uh, the churches, for example, of government buildings, so different, but, you know, uh, for, for the contemporary ones, it's just to get the shape and the, uh, the proportions and all, um, and, and the vibe, just capture that vibe. I treat every building differently. It uh, depends on what the details, the important details are, and that's where I focus on. When I'm sketching outside, my brain is more active. I look for things. I guess I don't have to think of what to sketch. I guess I just like playing around with one color and see how uh, I can show all the depth, uh, all the hues and the values. I also try to provide a contrasting color in the background or the sky. You've probably seen most, most of my skies like just yellow or something bright um, so that it, the building will stand out. But it's just very random. Whatever my mood is in that day, that's probably how I pick it, but I'm, I'm not conscious about it. I don't necessarily have to capture the actual color of the building unless that dictates the character of the building. I actually started more on the monochrome side, especially when I sketch classic buildings because I focus a lot on those details on a pen and ink and then just uh, put a splash of color in there and usually just, you know, doing the page and off-white. The more I go out, then said, the more I find my happy place, it gets me excited. I, I do a lot of photography as well before, but recording my experience in sketch kind of stays more with me and becomes more personal. Especially now in the digital age, a lot of people, like even if you're standing in the bus stop, everybody looking at their phones. My brain becomes active when I'm outside. Uh, I become more observant. I see things. I, I want to record things. Um, and even with photos, sometimes you miss things, except when you're doing sketch, you're actually focused on that. You fo in the photo, you just take it and put it in your pocket. You'll uh, not see it again. With the sketch, yes, it's very loose, but I feel it's more active. It's the same in architecture or urban design or urban sketching. This is how it feels in that place. They became more personal. I use the tablets as well once in a while, um, especially for work, but I've, I've tried doing urban sketches with the tablet and it's just doesn't feel the same. It's the sound of that pencil when you start sketching on the paper, right? It just feels good. And the smell of the, 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 the graphite, the smell of the pencil. And the, you know, the mess that you do when you, when you do water, when you use watercolor or paint. When you do it in a tablet, oh, that's a mistake. I'll just erase it. Undo, undo. With the paper, pencil, or watercolor, with the actual materials, you become more creative on, let's say you make a mistake. How do I solve that? When I discovered that sort of urban sketching movement in uh, Instagram, that's when I became more active in sketching buildings and doing the uh, urban scenarios. And I found a lot of um, inspiration from all those urban sketchers or artists as well. With the upcoming artists and uh, for the upcoming artists and urban sketchers. So just go out there, just go out and explore. Go ahead and sketch. Nobody's gonna judge you as long as you're happy with the output and you've shown them uh, what you really wanna show them. And I guess that's uh, where the satisfaction will be. Always carry something with you, even a small booklet, even a piece of paper. I've, I've even done sketches in, in napkins. Uh, I have my day timer full of sketches rather than actual schedules of what to do for that day. You know, if, if you're an artist or if you're an architect or engineer or designer, it also keeps you, you know, lets you practice a lot and keeps you aware of your environment. One of the experiences I really like as well is when I'm sketching on planes and when I'm sketching on public transport. You become being more observant, especially with urban sketching. You want to feel the whole space. You want that whole feel to be um, reflected in your sketch. 
uh, even if it doesn't look perfect, if even if it's just a loose sketch, but the whole essence, the whole vibe, the whole experience is there. To finish things off, we'll hear from renowned landscape artist Dominic Modlinski, whose painting journeys are a wilderness experience based on weeks of travelling rugged and barren lands. In plein air style, his work captures the majesty of nature. As we witness the disappearance of wilderness around the globe, Dominic hopes to portray a need to preserve the beauty of our planet, inspiring people through his paintings, photographs, stories and videos to care more for the environment. My name is uh, Dominic Modlinski. Uh, I'm a Canadian artist uh, working full-time in, uh, in oil medium. I paint and travel across the world in many different um, uh, environments. Uh, my main attraction is actually the far north, the Yukon, Alaska, the high Arctic, where I spent uh, uh, the last uh, three decades on and off uh, painting plein air and uh, the studio. I was born in Europe. I, I grew up in Poland. We always, I always spent time with my father in the mountains, in the Tatra mountains. My fascination with nature came from interacting with nature since I was a small child. I'm definitely uh, interested in particular environments, dramatic uh, mountain vistas, interesting foregrounds and lakes. I researched that. And then, you know, I, I make my pilgrimage there and I spent uh, a significant amount of time, at least a few days, painting and exploring on location till I get familiar with it. As I travel to different locations uh, across the world, I, I look for the, some aspects like color harmonies of the rock, overall lightning, which might be unique, and try to capture that in a plein air painting. And then, uh, transferring that into a studio painting, I have more time uh, in, and in-depth um, information from just being on that location for a period of time, and that serves me like a, um, a access library for sounds or smells that kind of, somehow I can incorporate that into creating the uh, the essence, uh, the feel of the, of the final composition. So I usually uh, wake, I wake up in the morning, I uh, have my breakfast and I start painting. Um, so I paint, let's say, from 9.30 till 12, then I have lunch, then another painting, then a break, and then another painting uh, before uh, dinner. So between two to three paintings a day. I make a calculated decision uh, before I start uh, painting, you know, where my shadows, where my lights will be, what will be the overall color harmony, what will be the, what will be the dominant contrast uh, in a painting, and I have to, and I am, um, and I stick with it from the beginning till end. Otherwise, if you change your mind halfway through, you know, the pa then the painting is not as successful. After two, three hours of painting outside, you achieve kind of a sense of uh, meditation that cannot be achieved by just being in a studio. Your senses respond very differently. And that's something that I always uh, start missing uh, during the, the winter and spring. The, the brushwork uh, that is achieved, the uniqueness movement of each stroke which you paint outside, uh, basically it's a subconscious response to the, to the environment I'm surrounded by. So it's very difficult and many artists and many masters over the you know, years and centuries always uh, struggle with that. How do you re recreate the essence that you are able to capture in a small painting into a bigger painting? Um, it's sometimes very difficult to do, to recreate that um, dramatic uh, response to uh, uh, you know, a fleeting moment in, uh, in the outside atmosphere. Besides being a plein air painter, you know, I'm a, I think I'm a reasonable, pretty good uh, photographer. So I spend a, a lot of time who, uh, while I'm hiking, uh, photographing everything that might interest me, uh, both from large vista to smaller details to um, atmospheric light, light uh, changes that I might later on incorporate that in the studio paintings. But now the difference is um, 
that if I if I was just an artist who would rely on photographs, my paintings would be, I would say, rather shallow uh, in terms of experience, or uh, some other some people call it the the inner truth, um, because I don't I wouldn't have the physical experience, but because I try to spend and commit a significant amount of time of being outside and uh, responding to what's happening. Uh, the combination of both um, uh, experience that I kind of soak in through the time and the experience that I record through photographs, the combination of both work quite well in the studio. I paint because I want to record uh, our vanishing uh, environment around us. And also, of course, I experience them from my own, but also give people a glimpse and a feel of how it is to be outside, what it is to see some of those places, and maybe also give them an inspiration and a little bit of push. Well, why don't you go there and also see that for yourself? Because you know, the more people see it, the, you know, the, um, the better it is in terms of being aware of what we are losing. Be patient with yourself and don't get frustrated. Um, you, uh, everything uh, is a matter of um, practice and experience. Also, when you travel um, plein air, try to uh, collect and gather um, um, equipment that is uh, reasonably light to travel with. Try to minimize everything to a small, no, no, a small size, like light, uh, light. Then you know it's much more pleasurable uh, to travel because you, a lot of times, you might have to carry that on your back. You don't have to, uh, you know, hike in 20 k's into the into the mountain to get the really good vista. I mean, life is the same all around us. Uh, you know, sunrise is a sunrise, sunset is a sunset. What I always tell my student is uh, to look for the unique uh, characteristic of the most simple um, uh, aspects of our natural environment. If you want to focus on just that one tree or several plants in your garden, that's, there's nothing wrong with it. It's, uh, the moment you start exploring the same subject uh, longer and longer, the better and more familiar you will get uh, with your subject and uh, more powerful uh, your painting will become. I arrived in the Yukon first time in 1994. It's the wide open spaces where you can still feel that you are somewhat uh, free, unconstrained by uh, society rules, by traffic rules, so, you know, because there might not be any roads. And uh, it just gives you that uh, sense of calmness, which we as a um, society are starting to lose because constantly are uh, bombarded by information, by um, by the uh, by technology, which, which is constantly encroaching on our in spiritual space. So being being up in the Yukon uh, gives me a sense of, uh, I guess, freedom and, and peace. The more time I have outside, you know, the more time I have to think about, you know, who I am, what, where I'm going, you know, the, it's that where voice it becomes quite ex accelerated and loud after two or three days in the bush and becomes, some people have a really hard time handling it. Um, I, uh, the first usually trip of the year, of the season, I find that the, the inner voice is quite loud, you know, and then it comes down and then that's kind of the wonderful state I've always uh, tried to be in. Well, I'm lucky that I don't live in a you know big city from my studio, I see the, 100 kilometers view of the coast mountains and um, you know everything is lush and, and, and green and it takes me only you know, less than half an hour to be in a, on the ocean you know less than half an hour to be on the ocean and, and kayaking I used to think that I could live up in a bush in a, in a cabin up north and I did that you know I did that uh, but um, it, it is it is uh, challenging uh, for art career and I had to make the very difficult uh, personal decision, you know, that I, I want to exhibit, I want to be in contact with galleries, I want to teach on a regular basis, and you know, 
And it's very difficult when when you are being a hermit. So sometimes you just have to make that those compromises. Part of my painting um, experience is always the uh, motive of journey. I journey by by canoe, by hiking, um, by kayaking, and but also my uh, big um, kind of uh, personal addiction is motorcycle. So I do travel on motorcycle, and my whole motorcycle is set up for plein air painting. And uh, one of my most memorable um, trips was uh, a trip to Bolivia and Peru uh, for seven weeks on a motorcycle. And uh, the, the whole uh, idea behind that journey was to film uh, a, a, a first season of my TV series called Changing Landscapes, where in each season, me and my best friend Scott Wilson will visit a unique location. I find the location to paint on. He explores the history around it, and the whole episode is made about the exploration, the painting, and the interacting with the local environment. And the other aspect of my um, part of my painting is also martial arts. I have been training martial arts since 1987. That gave me a strength and a dedication and focus to to go through some challenging aspects in my life, but also challenging aspects of um, being an artist, believing in yourself, but also being able to push myself physically while I'm out there in the in wilderness. As we've been hearing, the outdoors is a magic, constantly evolving and open source of inspiration. It's free for all to tap into, whether you're embarking on a well-planned expedition armed with easel and supplies or scribbling down an unexpected moment on the back of a napkin. So why not hit the pause button and take your practice outside? Breathe in the fresh air, observe your surroundings, pick up your tools and delve into a different state of mind, one teeming with memories, emotions, ideas, and ultimately, creativity.